do, let's jump over to our man Teddy Cakes at. Folks, you can check out Teddy under newsletters, the Tiger Forex Report. He puts out an outstanding letter every Monday and updates when warranted throughout the week. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Uh, always an interesting one when we talk to him on an interesting day like today, like Fed Day. Teddy Cakes, Dad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Yeah, we have an exciting day today, don't we? Oh, boy, man. I don't know. Uh, as I was mentioning to Kevin Hinks, I said, we'll know a lot more when I talk to you tomorrow in 24 hours than we do today because we find out a lot today, man. Um, where, where do you where, – where, I guess let's jump to the Fed, Teddy. What are you, what are you anticipating, if anything, this, um, this afternoon from Chairman Powell? Uh, well, I think a three-quarter point, no matter what, is something that should be expected. The full point, I don't know. Uh, it's very possible. It's, I think it's factored into the market already. Um, so, but yeah, I think for sure you're going to see a three-quarter point with the potential of a full point. You know, and uh, especially now that we have the ECB that's starting to uh, get hawkish, I think that there's no reason why Powell would uh, slow down his uh, course of action, if you will. And how would that? play into things with the ECB, I guess, is is when you look at, I mean, we have the dollar index surging even higher today, right? We got some action mm -hmm. going on with the dollar pushing 110.86 was the overnight. We're at 110.75 right now. Um, even though the ECB is hiking, I guess, is the way to put it. That doesn't seem like it's slowing down what's happening at all, whether it's our yields or the dollar at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that the ECB thing is only putting on the brakes a little bit as far as the euro US dollar trade is concerned. I still am very bearish that market. I mean, their three quarter point is only going to be canceled out by whatever we do today at the very least, you know, um, if not sure. actually taken over if we do a full point. So that makes it basically a moot, you know action if you will so uh, the euro us dollar i think is still going to trend lower i wouldn't doubt that after today you may see a little profit taking rally going on against the dollar i mean why wouldn't you you know um, now <clears throat> you got to realize that the three-quarter point was is definitely factored in a lot of people are factor factoring in the full point the fed speak is going to be important are they are we looking we know that they're going to remain hawkish the question is are they going to be firing on all cylinders remember six months ago we were talking about you know the fed raising rates every meeting at about a half a percent maybe three quarters here or there you know so and they started out with the halves now they're three quarters you know it's it's a very aggressive action that's going on right now and the question is how long are they going to maintain this? You know, and I was had a really interesting conversation with somebody in the real estate industry uh, just the other day. If you look at the yields, or, and or, excuse me, the mortgage rates, just in one year, they've tr they've tripled. You're going up 300 percent at going into this meeting if they raise a, a full point or even three quarters of a point. You're basically up 300 percent. Now, when you're coming off of next to zero, a 300 percent gain is not that big of a deal, but still, it is a big jump as far as what rates are doing to the marketplace, you know? Now, we're not gonna maintain that kind of rate, you know, like I wouldn't, if we're, if interest rates are up 300% from where they are right now, to, uh, going into today, next year, then we have a really serious issue, you know, because mortgage rates will be in the teens, you know? So, um, but I think for sure, listen to what Powell has to say after this meeting, and I think he's gonna stay aggressive. I think that what the stance that he has is he's gonna remain hawkish into the rest of the year, especially with the way the economic numbers have been coming out. Yeah, that CPI number, right? And we still have an unemployment rate mm -hmm. that by historical standards, man, is pretty low. So we're, we're mm -hmm. gaining hundreds of thousands of jobs a month, man. We got unemployment at 3.5, 3.6%, and we have inflation mm -hmm. raging. So yeah, I would say right. that they, they should keep the, the pedal um, to the metal, as they would say. Right. What do you think of, of Russia, man, and the news going on with Russia impacting things at all in terms of, you know, that the, the energy, the crude, we got crude mm -hmm. sitting pretty healthy at $85, as in not that bad of a price tag right now, 85, especially with potentially things ratcheting up with Putin mm -hmm. over there. Uh, well, especially with crude right now, you know, we had that buy signal that we put out in the report a couple of weeks ago. <clears throat> crude has been holding, you know, I mean, it's kind of bobbling off the lows. 
I think especially with this Russian thing that no matter what, things are going to escalate when it comes to commodity prices again. We're in the fall. We're coming into winter. These All these energy issues with the EU, they're going to come to roost sooner than later. Well, that's for sure. You know, you got to realize we are very, very lucky, even in the U.S. with the way <laughs> – I mean, the climatologists will tell you the earth, that we're, the earth is falling apart, but we haven't had any major storms in the U.S. that we normally have going into the fall. You know, we haven't had Houston hit with any hurricanes. Sure. You know, that has – that hasn't had any we haven't had any disruptions on the refinery or supply side in America which is weird for this time of year usually Oof, we will yeah. have had at least one major storm hit Houston you know it's like clockwork now globally the same issue is there now we're coming into winter what happens if the weather starts to really go hard this 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 winter come November and December the price the energy prices in Europe are crippling them if the Ukrainian Russian conflict this is not going to be over in 6 months this is not going to end at, at any time soon you know now I don't yeah. hopefully it doesn't get escalating on a in a really bad way but there is no way I can see this panning out that we're going to have some kind of peace talks or neutrality or easing up on anything, you know, over the next six months. The sanctions that are on Russia aren't hurting Russia. They're destroying the, the economy of the EU right now. And they're also affecting all kinds of other trade balances across the world. You know, lines in the sand were drawn by these sanctions. Those are not going to go away, even if you have peace talks between the Ukraine and Russia. You know, I mean, the reality yeah. is India, China, these things, they're in motion. They're set in stone now. Why would they come back to the table with the United States or even Europe or any of these other countries that have now put them through all this financial nightmare? Because on their, their end, they're looking at it like, well, we're not involved in this war. Why do we have to have our economy suffer because of what you're doing to act, you know, for your actions, you know? And I think it's all going to come to roost. I think that the dollar right now, we're riding a nice little wave higher, but when this thing turns, you know, and it could really turn very quickly next year, you're going to see a sell-off in the dollar like you saw in the bonds over the past year, you know, and that's going to be very big. You were talking about where the dollar index was a year ago. We could be back at those levels in less than in one year's time when we go down, when we start going the other way. Wherever we eventually turn, because, yeah, we will get over mm -hmm. that at some point, as in, I sure. think, you know, at least you have a, a chairman who may be late to the party of the Fed, but uh, seems like the focus is there. And it seems like, fortunately, our economy can handle it right now, at least better than Europe mm -hmm. in terms of really, you know, crushing things to the point of getting inflation under control and having right. an economy that, yeah, might not be as good as it's been. Um, but hopefully mm -hmm. the, the Fed doesn't completely destroy that where they have to come into the rescue following that. What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, let's jump to the dollar yen. All right. Because I was kind of surprised mm -hmm. to see we got dollar yen um, up a bit. We got gold up uh, even ten dollars. But gold, man, near near recent lows. You're talking about years. But what's your take on the yen, Teddy, as we push 144? Kind of similar. We're you just chopping mm -hmm. around in this area. Uh, well, right now, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that. Uh, after the meeting, when the, when the number gets hiked up, I think for sure you're going to see a little spike into U.S. dollar yen. Uh, they've already hit through some key resistance with, um, I mean, in the very short amount of time over the past few weeks to begin with. And I think that there's no way to see, that, no reason to think that these levels aren't going to keep continuing uh, to make higher move highs and higher move lows. So I think that after the meeting, we're going to probably see, if not today, over the next couple of sessions, we're going to see new highs in the yen. I can see us going to 150 over the next couple of weeks, if not the next two weeks or so. And will that eventually get the same type of pullback like the dollar uh, when, it, when that turns in the years to come? Oh, well, eventually, yeah, that will. But it's going to take... You know, a real a much Here, hang with us market. for one more segment, okay, Teddy? Perfect. Sure. We'll be right back, folks. Talk a little again to finish it up. We'll Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps up about 23 points right now, trading at 38.96. We're talking to our man, Teddy Kegstad. So just finishing up, Teddy, talking about, you know, because it is interesting to think about, right? We have the dollar index mm -hmm. charging above 110. Once we eventually maybe roll over, maybe once the Fed gets inflation under control, they don't have to be as restrictive. Uh, yields come into things, of course. Maybe that rolls over. Uh, now, is that uh, going to translate of course, it's going to translate to dollar pairings versus any currency. But mm -hmm. the way the yen has ridden up there, is that kind of a market that you could look for a similar top that, that would be tied to that type of a rollover in the dollar? Oh, I think that once we start to see the, the Fed not be so hawkish, that that would give us a good situation for a correction. I think really the only way you're going to see a big correction in the yen, though, is if we have another big sell-off in oil. You know, that's one of the big things. And I would say... 
if we get a bounce in the bonds in the tenure, which is very likely after this Fed meeting, you know, in, in a couple of sessions. Now, I would think that we may still push the lows first, you know, spike before we, uh, you know, reverse for a correction. But we're we're due for a correction. I mean, the way the bonds in the tenure cool. over trade now, there's no Seriously. reason to not see that we would have a three, four basis handle correction. If we have something like that, we could easily have a four to six dollar sell off in the yen. You know, so I mean, right now we're trading around one forty three. To get back to 137 for a bounce, very, very likely. You know, I think that going any lower than that, you could maybe get down to the 135 area. But that would be if we have like a week and a half to two weeks of the um, yields basically trending lower in the U.S. on the 10-year and the 30-year, which could very easily happen in between the next Fed meetings. We have a little gap now between this meeting and the next meeting. So for us to have a bounce, you know, going against the trend of the Fed, the market, I mean, you got to realize – the mortgage, the bankers right now are scrambling for people to refinance because they know that rates are going up. I mean, I had a conversation with somebody yesterday, you know, that they were trying to get people to refinance and lock them in yesterday. I'm like, well, that would be a good thing to do because tomorrow it's going to be up a full point. <laughs> you know? Sure. No, I you. hear you, man. The end so. is not in sight just yet, in my opinion. Um, right. But we get to find out today. Teddy, thanks for right. taking the time. As always, man, we appreciate it. Time. We'll talk to you next Wednesday. Folks, Thank check you. out the Tiger Forex report. Thanks so much for tuning in. Starting your day. Stay tuned. Basil's up next, folks. It's Fed Day. Don't go away. We'll be right back.